Yo, what is good? We're back. Hope that all you guys are doing well. In this tutorial, I'll be breaking down how you can create this cutout effect where you cut two clips out and line them up correctly inside of After Effects. And I'll also show you guys how you can spice it up in different ways and make it look as good as possible. So let's jump straight into After Effects and I'm gonna break it down for you guys. Real quick before we get into it, I just want to give a quick shout out to my shop, Lurk Visuals Store, where you can find all my personal presets that I've been using for years while editing music videos. I've got presets for Premiere Pro and After Effects. And I also got some overlays packs for all editing softwares. So if you're a fellow editor and trying to level up your work, make sure to check out the link in the description. But let's jump straight into the effect. So I'll be using this clip from this Wapa It Is What It Is music video, where they kind of pass the ball and then he just receive it right there. And I'll have the cutout basketball go all the way throughout the clip until it's out of the frame right there. And I'll also be masking out his hand to put it above the cutout so it can look a little bit better. But the first step will be to find a video where you kind of have a basketball traveling. And the video that I got is this video from, since it's a little bit short, I'll be duplicating it and drag it over. So I'll be having it twice, but let's start off with the first one. The first step will be to grab this tool right up here or press Q on your keyboard and it will select automatically. And then select your layer and start masking out just like this. You can do it in different shapes. If you want to have like a round shape, you can do it like this. But what I think looks best when it comes to these cutouts is rectangle or a square, something like this. I'll be putting it right in the middle and actually want to size it down a little bit. So I'll go down here to mask expansion and turn it down just like this. And then to line it up correctly, I'll be turning down the opacity. So you can see both balls at the same time pause and then I'll be pressing Y on my keyboard to move the anchor point to the middle of my object which is the basketball. Then I'll be sizing it up to make it fit correctly. And Just like that should be good. It doesn't have to be perfect but I'll be doing it like this and then just go frame by frame and put it right where it's supposed to be. Since I don't have too many frames, I have like half a second or something. It shouldn't take too long. If we're doing this on a much longer clip, I would recommend that you motion track it. And I'll also be making keyframes for the scale because you can see as the ball comes closer, it gets a little bit bigger. So I'll have to scale up my basketball to make it fit. And let's just go frame by frame and do this. So now that I'm done with the first clip, because since I have two different clips, I'll be doing them separately. I can turn up the opacity and as you can see, the masking isn't centered. So I'll be pressing mask path and create a keyframe for that and then drag it to the beginning of the clip. And then I'll be messing with the mask path just to put it in the middle. So it's kind of centered and I'll go through that frame by frame too, just to make sure that it looks good. And I'm happy with how that looks. So now I'll be unhiding the second one and once again I'll create a mask for that and then just line it up correctly just like that and once again I'll be going frame by frame with both the scale and the position just to get something that is tracked correctly and just like that I'm done with the tracking so I'll be turning up the opacity once again and now this is what I got and as you can tell right here, his hand is under the ball, which I don't really like. It doesn't look too good. So what I'll be doing is duplicating the background layer and drag it above the ball right here. When he receives the ball, I'll cut it right there and grab the roller brush tool and turn the quality to full. And then I'll start masking out his hands just as good as I can. Since he's moving and the basketball is moving, and the camera's moving, it will be quite difficult, but it's just for a few frames. So if I mess up, it won't be too visible. And try to get some of your, try to get some of your subjects forearm right here, just so we can fit the cutout. I'm finally done with the masking. And as you can tell right now, it looks horrible, but to kind of save it a little bit, I'll be adding a refined soft matte to the rotoscope player and just mess with the settings to get something that looks good because this often saves so many of my maskings with just messing with the additional edge radius and the feather I can actually get something that looks a lot better so I think this should do it maybe turn down the feather a little bit 
and this is how it looks with the refined soft matte and then without it just looks a little bit better you can also turn down the shift edge but as you can tell i didn't get i didn't get enough of his forearm because you can see that it's kind of penetrating through his arm so what i'll be doing to get rid of that is go to the and mess with the mask expansion so i'll create a keyframe and turn down the mask expansion just like this so it's a little smaller and doesn't go that far up his forearm but you can see for this frame it would kind of look better if i just move the mask so i'll keyframe the mask path and instead just select the masking and then move it up right there maybe so now if i play it through this is what i got it still looks really good when you play it in real time so i'm really happy with how that looks if you'd like to you can also turn on motion blur but i don't think it looks as good with these type of effects and now to spice it up i'll be adding a adjustment layer and i really think this scene will look a lot better if it was black and white with some grain so I'll add on a tint to the adjustment layer as the first effect and then add an add grain effect just to get some grain and change the viewing mode to final output and then I'll mess with the intensity. These settings kind of depend on your clip but I'll just put the intensity to 0.7. If you'd like to you could also add a posterize time effect but I often realize that it really messes with these cutout effects because the frame rate is messed up so it kind of messes with the ball so you can tell that it's not like in place right now but it still looks good and I changed the frame rate to 12 I mean it still looks really good so if you like to go with this you can do that but that's basically for this tutorial thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like and subscribe and like I always say I got some crazy packs in my store make sure to check them out if you're a video editor but thank you so much for watching once again and i'll see you guys in the next one